Hello, hello, and welcome back. In the previous video, we completed the basic Tetris game functionality. And in this one, we'll further improve our program. Specifically, we'll add a couple more forms, including a leaderboard form. So let's get started. First of all, let's add a new form to the Tetris package and name it leaderboard form. Now let's add another form and name it startup form. What we're going to do is we're going to put the forms together in a single multi-form program, just like we did in one of the previous videos of this video series. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I recommend that you refer to that video. So let's first add three buttons to the startup form. One to start the game. One to show the leaderboard. And one to quit the game. Let's not forget to rename the buttons accordingly. Now to the game form and leaderboard form, let's add a button that will take the user back to the startup form. Also, let's not forget to make the forms unresizable. And centered at launch. So similarly to the multi-form program that we made in one of the previous videos, we will have the Tetris class instantiate all three form classes and store references to the objects in static variables. But this time, we will not make the static variables public. Instead, we will make them private and provide public static methods to access the forms. So first of all, to the Tetris class, let's add a public static method that will show the game form and start the game. Now, what does it mean to start the game and how do we do that? If we switch to the game form class and look at its constructor, we will see a start game method call. And if we scroll down to the start game method, we will see that what it does is it instantiates the game thread class and starts the thread, which effectively starts the game. In other words, instead of calling the start game method inside the game form constructor, we should call it when the start game button on the startup form is pressed. So let's remove this method call from the constructor and add it to the start method of the Tetris class instead. Now we can call this start method when the start game button on the startup form is pressed. And since the start method is static, we can call it on the class. Let's not forget to hide the startup form itself. And we can now run the project, not the game form file as we did before. To do that, we press this run project button. But when we press the button, nothing happens. Any ideas why? Let's switch over to the Tetris class and take a look. Did somebody say that the main method doesn't do anything? Exactly. But what code do we add to the main method? To get a hint, you can refer to the video where we created our first multiform program. So we need to instantiate the forms and make the startup form visible.
and we need to do all that in a separate thread by using the invoke later method, like this. And now if we press the run project button, we will see the startup form. And if we now click the start game button, we will see our game in a weirdly behaving main menu button. This happens because we mess up with the layout of the form when in the game area class we make the placeholder J panel invisible. So if we comment out this line of code and run the game, The button will be where it's supposed to be. And at this point, it's okay to keep the placeholder panel visible. We actually don't need to hide it anymore. Now back to the Tetris class. Let's add a method that will display the leaderboard form. And call this method inside the leaderboard button event handler of the startup form class. Finally, let's have a program terminate when the user clicks the quit button. The quit button seems a bit redundant here, but it doesn't really hurt having it, does it? So to have the program terminate, we can call the exit method of the system class, like this. And now our program shows the leaderboard form and quits when we press respective buttons on the startup form. Now let's make our program take the user back to the startup form when he or she clicks the main menu button on either the game form or the leaderboard form. To achieve that, we need another public static method in the Tetris class that would make the startup form visible. And we need to call it in the game form. and the leaderboard form. Now, if we start the program, press the start game button to start the game, then press the main menu button, we will go back to the startup form. However, if we press start game again, we will see something weird. What's happening here is every time we start a game, we create a new game thread object. So eventually we get more than one game thread object moving the block downward, which makes the block sort of move faster. What do we do to fix this? We can terminate the game thread object when the main menu button on the game form is pressed. But first of all, how do we terminate a thread object? To terminate a thread object, we first need to know the object reference, but currently we do not store it. Here in the start game method of the game form class, we instantiate the game thread class, but do not store the reference. Let's fix this now by adding to the game form class a member variable that will store the reference to the game thread object and make necessary changes to the start game method. Now we can terminate the thread when the main menu button is pressed. To terminate the thread, we can call the interrupt method. But this is only a half of it. Calling the interrupt method doesn't actually terminate the thread. However, when the interrupt method is called while, for example, the thread is sleeping, it throws an interrupted exception that we in fact catch here in the game thread class. So to terminate the game thread inside the catch block, we need to terminate the entire run method of the game thread class. How do we terminate the method? Right, we add a return statement. Let's run the game now to see the problem fixed.
Unfortunately, we have some other issues. If we play the game a little, then return to main menu, then start the game again, we'll see that the score and level labels have not been reset. In addition, the game area hasn't been cleared, and the game now doesn't react to key press. Wow, quite a few issues we have now. Let's try to fix them. So first of all, when we start the game, we need to make sure that the score gets reset to 0, and the level gets reset to 1. What class in our program is responsible for keeping track of the score and level? Right, the game thread class. So what we need to do is we need to call the update score and update level methods every time a new game thread object is created, which means we need to do that where? Right, inside the game thread class constructor, like this. Now, to make sure the game area gets cleared every time we start the game, we need to clear the background array that belongs to the game area class. What we can do is we can create a new public method that will instantiate the background array instead of the class constructor, like this. And now we should call the method every time the game starts, which means we should call it in what method of what class? Right, in the start game method of the game form class. Please know that we should call the init background array method before we start the game thread. All right, another issue solved. Now, why does our game stop responding to key press after restart? Because of how we set up key bindings. They become inactive when the main menu button on the game form receives the so-called focus, and it receives it when we press the button. We could fix the key bindings, but we can also take an easier approach and prevent the main menu button from receiving focus. To do that, let's select the button in design mode, find the focusable property in the properties, and turn it off. Now if we run the game, we will see that the three issues are solved now. Now it's time we'll make our game more informative when the player loses the game. Currently, we only print game over using the println method, which is not useful for a program with graphical user interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our program display a game over message and ask the player to enter his or her name to display that name along with a score in the leaderboard. First of all, since this involves transition from the game form to the leaderboard form, we should make the Tetris class responsible for this part. So let's switch over to the Tetris class and add a public static method named simply game over. The method will display the game over message and ask the player to enter his or her name. For this, we can use the show input dialog method of the JOption pane class. There are several versions of the method, but for now, let's go with the first one just to see what it looks like. Now, inside the run method of the game thread class, we can call the game over method instead of printing game over to the console. And now, if we run the game, and trigger game over. We will see the pop up message. All right, now how do we get the name that the player typed in here? If we look at the show input dialog method description, we will see that its return type is string. And you got it, that string is the user input. In other words, we can store the return of the show input dialog method and just for now print it like this. Seems to be working. But when we get player's name, we don't need to keep showing the game form. What we need to do is we need to hide the game form and show the leaderboard form. 
However, in addition to showing the leaderboard form, we need to somehow pass it the player's name. In other words, we need a method in the leaderboard form class that will accept player's name. So let's switch over to the leaderboard form class, clean up and space out the code, and add a public void method named addPlayer that takes player name as a parameter. For now, let's have the method make the leaderboard form visible. And now in the game over method of the Tetris class, we can call the add player method and pass it the name we got from the input dialog. Let's also make the game form invisible and remove the println method call. And it seems to be working. Now in the leaderboard, in addition to player name, we should at least display the score. So let's have the add player method take another parameter, the score. Now how do we get the score in the Tetris class to pass it to the add player method? Well, we can have the score passed to the game over method as a parameter and then pass it over to the add player method. And how does the game over method get the score? Let's switch to the game thread class that calls the game over method of the Tetris class. Since the game thread class keeps track of the score, it can just pass it to the game over method, like this. Now we have our program display the leaderboard form on the screen and pass player's name and score to the leaderboard form class. How do we display the leaderboard itself, the names and scores? As usual, there are several ways to do that. We're going to use the jade table that you can find at the bottom of the swing controls section of the palette window. Let's drag it to the form below the main menu button and change its name to be neat. Now currently the table has four columns, while we only need two for name and score, at least for now. To delete the extra columns, let's click on the table. Find the modal property in properties and click it. Here, let's set the number of columns to 2 and the number of rows to 0, since we will add rows in code. Let's also change the titles of the columns to player and score and make the columns uneditable by unchecking these checkboxes. Now let's switch to source mode and modify the add player method so that it adds player name and score to the table. The way JTable works is not very straightforward, unfortunately. So JTable is basically responsible for displaying or drawing data, pretty much like our game area draws Tetris blocks. The data that the JTable draws is stored separately in a table modal. In other words, to have some data displayed in a J table, we need to add that data to the table modal associated with the J table. And the J table will display the data stored in the table modal, meaning we can add data directly to the J table. All right, our leaderboard needs a table modal. Fine, let's give it a table modal. There is another problem though. We can't use table modal directly. Instead, we have to use the default table modal class, which is simply put a type of table modal. So let's add to the leaderboard form class a member variable of the type default table modal and name it tm. Let's also add a private void method named init table data that will be responsible for initializing the variable tm. Now we could create a new instance of the default table modal class using the new operator, but we're not going to do that. Some of you might remember that when changing the number of rows and columns in the table, we edited a property called modal. In other words, table modal also stores the information about the number of rows and columns. So instead of creating a new table modal, we should use that modal that we edited in design mode. How do we get that modal? By calling the getModal method on the leaderboard instance of the jTable class. If we do that though, NetBeans will yell at us that table modal cannot be converted to default table modal. What? Why can it not be more user friendly, you might ask? And the answer is, I don't know. This is one of the reasons why we're using JTable, to show you that there might be some weirdly unfriendly things in programming in general and in Java in particular. 
How do we use this table modal then? Well, even though table modal cannot be automatically converted into default table modal, we can force conversion. How? By adding the data type we want to convert to enclosed in round brackets before the value we want to convert. This is called type casting. Simply put, it's conversion of one data type into another, but it only works for compatible types. For example, we cannot convert int to string using typecasting, but typecasting table modal to default table modal works just fine. So we finally got our table modal and assigned a reference to it to the variable tm. Let's not forget to call the init table data method. Where? Right, inside the constructor, because we need this method to be called at the start and only once. Now inside the add player method, we can now add a new player to the table by adding the data to the table modal. To add data to the table modal, we can use the add row method called on tm. There are two versions of the add row method. One takes an array of the type object, and the other takes something weird looking as a parameter. Let's use the first one just because it looks more familiar. So we need to give it an array of the type object. And in the array, we must place player name and score. Some of you might say, player name is a string and score is an int. How do we put them together into an array of the type object? Well, in Java, any data type can be treated as object. In other words, just like with the Tetris block array that we used in the previous video, we can put a string and an int in the same array of the type object if we treat the string and the int as objects. So we can construct a new array of the type object with predefined values, player name and score. Let's now run the game. And do our best to lose as soon as possible. Oh, finally. Now let's type in a name. Press OK to see our name in the leaderboard. Yay! So step seven, complete. All right, let's now summarize what we did in this video. We added two more forms to our game, a startup and a leaderboard form. We also wired all the forms in a single multiform project and made the Tetris class serve as a form manager. In addition, we added a leaderboard that displays player names and scores in a J table. As usual, there are some issues which we're gonna fix in the next video. And this is it for this one. Hope it wasn't too hard for you to follow. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.